There's no shortage of pro snowboarding brothers out there, the Simpsons, the McMorrises and the Jacksons, just to name a few, but surely none of them garner quite the same attention as the Helgesons. They set up their own snowboard brand, Lobster Snowboards, almost 10 years ago now, and it really shook things up with some pretty outlandish graphics, as well as a really, really broad range of freestyle-specific snowboards. I've got both of the boys' pro signature snowboards with me here. This is the Haldor Pro and the Ike Pro. So let's take a look at how they stack up against each other. Now, despite both being freestyle specific snowboards, there is quite a lot that separates the two of them. Ike's is definitely more geared towards flatland jibbing or street and rail riding, whereas Haldor's is an altogether more aggressive and stiffer all-mountain freestyle snowboard. But let's start with what they do have in common. So both boards are built around a true twin construction, which isn't altogether surprising, considering they're both freestyle and park specific snowboards. They also use the same poplar wood core, which is reinforced with two hardwood stringers. So poplar is often the go-to choice for its weight to strength ratios, and it just has really good properties for making light, snappy, and responsive snowboards. They've also got the flex sidewalls, and these are infused with urethane. So given the fact that these are probably going to be coming into contact with a few features in the streets or the park, it adds a bit of durability along the edge of the snowboard. Not to mention that urethane helps to absorb some of the high speed shatter as well. But that is where the similarities end. And in terms of the flex ratings, both the boards have quite a stark difference between them. Ike's comes in at a 3 out of 10, making it the softest snowboard in the Lobster line, whereas Haldor's is quite a bit stiffer at a 6 out of 10. That's down to the fact mainly that Ike's uses biaxial fiberglass laminates. So these are really, really soft torsionally, and it makes the board as good as it is for locking into presses, for buttering, for jibbing on whereas Haldor's has gone with Triax fiberglass layers and that gives the board a much more torsionally stiff and responsive feel. So when you're riding this thing a bit faster or you're pushing it a bit harder, this one's gonna feel a little bit more responsive underneath your feet. Then there's also the subtle differences between their triple base technology profiles. Now, if you've not come across 3BT before, you'll have seen it in all of the battalion models and quite a few of the lobster models as well. Essentially, the nose and tails of the board are broken into three sections, where you have a flat center section, which is uplifted by two side base sections on either side. Now, the benefits of this have been talked about and talked over for years, ranging from carving to riding powder to just all mountain versatility. But in the case of these two boards, you're definitely gonna feel it most with its advantages in freestyle and park riding. So Ike uses Jib 3BT, and this has the widest center base section of all the different profile variations. That means it's really, really stable and super easy to lock in and hold a press, whether that's on the snow, on a box, or on a rail, but with just enough uplift in the side to avoid hooking up or catching an edge around the contact area. Haldor's board, on the other hand, uses Twin 3BT. Now this is quite similar, but that center base section is just a touch narrower, meaning you've got increased side base sections. Again, the advantages are definitely gonna help out in the park, but you may find with Haldor's board, it has just a little bit more all-mountain versatility too. So if you're carving or riding in crappy conditions, or even if you wanna take this into a little bit of side country pow, those sections are just gonna to help to smooth that edge to edge feeling and even keep the front end of the board lifted up in deeper conditions. There's also quite a big difference in terms of their camber profile. So even with the 3BT, both boards are still full tip to tail positive cambers. So that's the profile that gives you the most pop, response, snap and stability when you're riding on the edge. The difference being though that Ike's has a much lower and really subtle mellow camber, whereas Halder's board has the most aggressive in the range, which is called a dynamic camber. The big difference with that is that this thing is gonna have way, way more pop and way more snap underfoot when you wanna get up in the air. With Ike's board already having a more playful and forgiving feel, that low rise camber suits it really, really well. There's still a bit of pop and there's still gonna be some edge to edge response on the board, obviously, but it is just gonna feel a bit more playful and a little bit more predictable to ride, especially if you're coming on and off features. Haldor's, on the other hand, has much, much more snap underfoot and a lot of power to take into bigger features across the whole mountain. 
So whether you're lining up for the pro line in the park or whether you're just charging through the whole resort, that more aggressive, powerful camber is going to really increase the board's overall response. And lastly, we come on to the carbon additives, which are actually really similar between the two boards. In both cases, we've got carbon stringers that run from edge to edge directly underneath the insert pack. This has a few different advantages. First of all, by keeping the center and the nose and tail of the snowboard free from additives, it means both boards have a pretty playful overall flex pattern. They're not too stiff longitudinally or torsionally. But what it does also do is it increases some of that edge to edge response. So if you're setting up for a park feature or if you're just riding hard on the edge of the board, you've got that additional snap and response directly underneath your feet. The difference between the two boards being that Ikees is only opting for a single carbon stringer under each insert, whereas Haldor's being the stiffer, more aggressive board has opted for two stringers underneath each insert pack. So there it is, that is the 2021 Haldor Pro and Ikey Pro. Obviously both boards have freestyle fixed pretty firmly within their sights, but as you've probably seen, there's still quite a lot of difference between the two. If you're someone who's opting for that softer, more jib focused board, then the Ikey Pro is without doubt one of the best offerings on the market. If, however, you're looking for something with a slightly stiffer flex and bucket loads of pop so you can take freestyle to the whole mountain, then the Haldor Pro is definitely worth checking out. In any case, we're huge fans of what Lobster have done with this season's lineup. Aside from these two boards here, I've also got the Stomper and the Cream behind me from Lobster, and both of these were selected for the White Line's 100 Best Snowboard Products of the Year. So if you want to check out the full reviews for them, I'll stick them somewhere up here, I think, or if not, they'll be down below in the description. If you've got any questions about any of the boards, drop them down below in the comments, and we will be sure to get back to you. Otherwise, that's it for me. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.